everybody, my name is Christina. Let's just slightly this is chemistry fourteen twelve. Today is November the fourth, twenty nineteen, and we are doing determination of a uh, vitamin C concentration by redox titration. Let's get into it. First thing to do is to prepare the two gram per liter stock solution of ascorbic acid. Um, so what you what we will do is measure out 0.5 um, of the vitamin C ascorbic acid, um, 0.5 grams, and tear it on the weigh boat. Um, we will put that into our ascorbic acid cup and then put the 250 um, mLs of water into it. Then we can prepare the sample of unknown concentration. Next, we're going to prepare our unknown solution. So fill the medicine cup um, 50 to 100% full with acetic acid, um, or I'm sorry, ascorbic acid. Um, so we did that, filled it about 75%. Um, and then we're going to put this in our unknown um, cup and then we will put 50 ml of pure water into it. And now we'll stir and put a pipette with it. Next we're going to prepare the 2,6 DCPIP solution. Um, I've added um, 100 ml of pure water to this bottle and um, we're shaking it up right now. Um, this, this ends our preparation for the lab. Activity one is developing a standard curve. So I put two mLs of pure water in here in the Erlenmeyer flask. Um, now we'll use a dropper to put in um, one drop of the DCPIP solution um, to turn it blue and indicate the end point. Dispose of it in the waste. it out. A medicine cup about half full with the um, DCPIP solution. We get the 5 mLs of DCPIP solution in the syringe. We're going to um, put 0.5 mLs of ascorbic acid into the Erlenmeyer flask. We're going to begin our titration for the 0.5 grams per liter ascorbic acid sample. Put 1.5 mLs of pure water, that's 1.5. Okay, now we add this um, DCPIP until it's the color of what we saw in our preparation part. I would say that is a good endpoint. It's green, almost blue tint. Never got the blue color, but this is more of a blue-green color, that green persistent color that um, the lab experiment talks of. So I only have 0.4 left in my syringe, and that's what I'll record in my data table one. We need to perform the titration for the one gram per liter sample. We're gonna put one ml of the ascorbic acid into the flask. And then, one ml of pure water to the flask. And then we will put five ml of the DCPIP in the syringe um, and do the same thing as we did previously. That persistent green color, not the actual blue color. Next, perform the titration for the 1.5 grams per liter ascorbic acid sample. Um, we're going to put 1.5 ml of ascorbic acid stock solution and then uh, 0.5 of the pure water into the Erlenmeyer flask and do the same thing we've done for the last two. Blue color, but I got a persistent green color. We use 2.0 grams per liter of ascorbic acid 
and no additional water. And we'll do the same thing we've been doing. For the 2.0 gram per liter sorbic acid sample, um, again, just that green persistent color and I'll record. Activity two is titrating the unknown concentration. Transfer two mLs of the unknown sample into the Erlmeyer flask and then um, fill your syringe with five mLs of DCPIP. File one. And there's my bluish green color um, that I got with 0.4 left. The titrating the unknown concentration. Again, we're going to put uh, 2.0 um, mLs into the Erlenmeyer flask and do the same thing we did. I might actually subtract a few of the drops just because it's a little more blue than green that I'm used to. So I went past the equivalent point. of titrating the unknown concentration. I'm going to add two and then continue adding the DCPIP um, and put it in the data table. Um, more green, um, but it's persistent. It's about the same color. Experiment, plot your data into um, Excel or into Word. Go ahead and plot the best fit line and then um, capture your data points correctly uh, and then place it into your lab report and you're done.